61 year old male here for pain in the right shoulder uh, for about four months. No obvious injury, but he was doing some heavy lifting. MRI shows full thickness supraspinatus tear. I thought it might be a high grade partial, so we're going to help clarify that. It also has some fluid in the subscap recess and the bicipital um, tendon sheath as well. We're going to take a peek at that. Also, it was told he may have a split in the biceps tendon. So we're going to take a peek at that as well. Also, he has a little bit of septodoid bursitis. You can come around, sure. So, um, left side of the screen is medial. We're looking at the biceps tendon. So here I think is a split in the proximal biceps tendon. Sometimes you can get loose bodies in the bicepital sheath, which is which is maybe that. as well. That's, um, our first cut. Certainly here you can see a larger fusion. And you can kind of make a glimpse of those partial tears. Look at this in long axis. Here's this biceps tendon. You can see a fair amount of fluid around it. And again, here you can see the fluid basically surrounding uh, the biceps tendon. Okay, now we're going to look at his subscap tendon. As mentioned, actually, you may have an intrasubstance tear of that. As far as MRI, they thought he was an intrasubstance tear. You can see this biceps tendon there. Here is, I believe, a small intrasubstance tear of the subscap tendon, which you can see in long access to the tendon. Here again, you right can see some of that intrasubstance tearing of the biceps tendon. And here you can see both the distended bicipital sheath as well as the distended subscapularis recess. Subscap tendon, which looks fairly okay. And here's a normal subdeltoid bursa, which is not distended. One thing I wanted to mention is that he does have a overhanging subscap recess, which you can see here, 934. So again, we're in long access to the subscapularis tendon, and you can see uh, part of this distended subscapularis recess. Fluid there above the, above the subscap tendon which overhangs which is really fluid from the joint which comes out. So you don't want to confuse that with the subdeltoid bursitis. Right side of the screen is inferior looking at the subscap tendon. Again here you can see the interval with the biceps tendon and then inferior to that you see the subscapularis tendon. I'm going to change that. We're at 935. Biceps tendon. Again, here is just another view. You get a better look at the subscap and then, tendon. And then if you go inferior to that, you'll get your subscap. So we've got the biceps tendon. And here at the very distal anterior supraspinatus tendon, you can see some small partial tearing of the articular surface of the distal supraspinatus. Here you can see uh, posteriorly, you can see how it's inserting now in the middle facet, which is flatter than the superior facet. And at this view, we really don't see any tears of the supraspinatus tendon, even though it's the anterior distal tendon. Again, here's that flattened middle facet as you go posteriorly. So essentially, the very distal anterior supraspinatus tendon did show some signs suggestive of partial articular sided tearing. I mean, certainly it doesn't look like a full thickness tear based on ultrasound, which is good. On MRI, sometimes you have to window the contrast, especially in these fat-saturated sequences. And sometimes when you window it, you'll actually see tendon where you thought there wasn't. Now, these MRI images are actually two different images, but in one, you can see mostly bright signal distally in the tendon. In the other one, you could make out some supraspinatus tendon. So we got the biceps tendon in the groove. And here you can see a pretty thick supraspinatus tendon to the left of the biceps tendon here, a tire on a wheel type of configuration. And here's infraspinatus tendon now, long axis. And you can see it attaching on the middle facet. Like that, nice and gently. See some movement here, bad. It's always good just to have the patient internally and externally rotate. You can see, you can see actually different parts of the infraspinatus tendon come into view during this. Also, you can catch a view of the labrum as well. And here's a good view of the labrum abutting essentially the humeral head. You can see the infraspinatus tendon attaching to the middle facet of the greater tuberosity. This is short axis, just labeled infraspinatus. So here I did not label inferior or superior, but given the fact that the scapular spine is on the left side of the screen, that would make the infraspinatus to the left and the teres minor to the right.